Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me extend a very warm welcome to you for this uh, plenary session one of the Global Education Leaders Conclave. And the theme for uh, the plenary session one is uh, fostering innovations in education, best practices and next practices. And we have uh, a very distinguished panel here to uh, discuss this very important subject. We have uh, of all these speakers who are listed in the book, uh, five of them are here, three of them are already on the, on the dais and two of them are joining us in five minutes. Uh, let, let me make some initial remarks. Uh, my job is very simple. I'm going to just coordinate the session and finish it in time uh, as, as quickly as, 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 much, po uh, as, in, as much possible as, uh, in, in, in the given time. We are already behind schedule. We have started uh, at, at uh, uh, quite late. We are about half an hour uh, behind schedule. So uh, we will try to uh, conclude this session in one hour rather than one and a half hour. So we'll try to bring it uh, on track. Uh, since we have uh, five speakers, uh, we can give each one of them uh, about uh, seven minutes uh, and then uh, uh, they will also get a couple of minutes of second round, if possible, depending on uh, how it goes. So we are going to give seven minutes each to uh, the five speakers, and we sh it should leave some time for uh, discussion on the floor. And then uh, these people, our distinguished panelists, can also get some time, a couple of minutes each, to uh, give their rebuttal in case there are questions. Uh, so with that, uh, let, let me make, uh, se give the setting. The purpose of this session, as I understand, is to uh, learn from the experiences of uh, different countries in terms of fostering innovations uh, in education. Since we are talking about the best practices and next practices, uh, we will get to hear from this distinguished panel about the best practices in the countries that they represent and their own individual and institutional effort in terms of uh, the institution that uh, they belong. Uh, that said, uh, let me just add uh, a few things. Uh, uh, the Minister uh, of uh, Higher Education, the Minister of State in Higher Education, Barliaji, you can come on the stage, please. So uh, the Minister has given you an overview of what is happening in the uh, higher edu education sector and higher education. Let me add something to that. As was mentioned to you, we are about to finish uh, the 12th five-year plan document. As you are aware, we, are, we have finished the 11 five-year plans and currently the work on the final uh, stage, work, work is in the final stage for as far as the drafting of the 12th five-year plan is concerned. In fact, as a member uh, of planning commission in charge of education, among other things, I'm the one who is putting it all together. So this conference is coming at uh, not a day too sooner in the sense that while we are at the final stage of putting together our thoughts on education sector, uh, that is the time when uh, this conference is, 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 has been scheduled. So uh, from this conference, uh, I'm going to take away personally, uh, going to try to take away as many things as possible, uh, reflecting the best practices and the next practices which are, uh, which are best practices which are followed in different countries and that would shape the next practices that we are going to follow in our own country. Uh, the importance of education need not be overemphasized. Um, we, we all know about it. Only uh, three minutes I want to give you a perspective on what is happening in the education sector. Um, we all know about the demographic dividend. We are having this great advantage. The average age of India is only 20, 24 right now. And by the year 2020, it would be about 29. And uh, when India is average age is about 29 in the year 2020, that is the time when the average age of the rest of the world, particularly in the developed countries, would be much, much higher. For example, the average age in the United States would be 36. The average age in China would be 37. By the year 2020, the average age of Western Europe would be 42. And the average age of Japan would be 48. Which means that India has a tremendous advantage in terms of having large and growing young population. Uh, in the age group of 10 to 35, we have 563 million people. Um, and in the age group of 10 to 19, we have currently 225 million people. Um, this incidentally happens to be the largest cohort of young people making a transition to adulthood. 
which means that India has a great potential advantage in terms of uh, a demographic dividend uh, that is fortuitously being available to us. And I must say that in India, it is recognized at the highest possible level that this demographic dividend needs to be harnessed. And if we fail to harness this demographic dividend, uh, the few, not only the future generations will never forgive us, we would be squandering an opportunity that comes into the life of a nation only once. And we don't want that to happen. And therefore, we are committed. The government of India is committed to harnessing this demographic dividend because if we do not if we do not harness this demographic dividend, it will turn out to be a demographic nightmare because we will have mouths to feed but not the hands that can work. So the only way we can, most effective way to harness this demographic dividend is to focus on two sectors, education and skill development. These are the two sectors which are going to be focus of the 12th five-year plan. In fact, in the approach paper to the 12th five-year plan, which was approved last year by the highest policy-making body in our country, that is the National Development Council, has clearly stated that educational skill development is a very high priority sector. And right now, we are in the process of finalizing the allocations for uh, education skill development. And there are big and very ambitious targets uh, about the education. There are various new things which are going to happen. In fact, the complete overhaul of education sector is, is expected. We started investing more on education from the 11th five year plan. The same process is going to continue with a greater gusto in the 12th five year plan and various ideas are being talked about and that is where I think this conference can be very useful in terms of learning from the best practices across the world. This is about the education. Then turning to the skill development, let me also mention that skill development along with education is a very high priority sector as far as the government of India is concerned and that is going to be reflected. There would be a special chapter on skill development in the 12th five year plan and I am currently drafting that chapter on the skill development. There again inputs from this conference are going to be exceedingly uh, useful. Uh, there I must tell you that the target that the Honorable Prime Minister has given placed before us is very ambitious. The target given is that by the year 2022, that is 10 years from now, we should have technically trained person power of not less than 500 million people. Now that's a huge uh, target. In the next 10 years, we want to technically, we want to have technically trained person power available to the extent of 500 million people. Because looking into the future, it's very clear that everywhere there is going to be an acute shortage of this skilled person power. Uh, India would be one of the few exceptions. In fact, um, it, it has been estimated by the year 2022, there would be a shortfall, a global shortfall in the technically trained person power of about 64 million people. If that is going to be the case, India is one of those few countries which has a surplus, but that surplus has to be properly trained. If we put our act together in skill development, what can happen, and we are certainly hoping and aiming at that, that by the year 2022, India can potentially emerge as a net provider of technically trained person power to the entire rest of the world, including China. So it depends on whether or not we put our education and skill development uh, house together. And that is why education and skill development is receiving overriding priority in the 12th five year plan. And that is where the feedback that we are expecting from this conference can be very meaningful in terms of giving the finishing touches to the document of the 12th five year plan as far as the education is concerned, which I am currently writing. So without any further ado, let us start with the speakers. Um, we will go in the same order in which they are listed. And as I said, each speaker will get about seven minutes uh, to begin with. And if the time permits, two more minutes later on, uh, if there is a discussion and there is a rebuttal. So let me start uh, with uh, uh, His Excellency Dr. A.K. Jaguswar, uh, is it there? Yeah, okay. Yo. Our, our first speaker is, uh, is uh, as I said, uh, His Excellency Dr. A.K. Jaguswar. He is the High Commissioner of Mauritius. Mr. Jaguswar. Uh, 